In this video, we're going to look at some of the ways the Clippers impacted Luka Doncic defensively in Game 4's victory. Alright, so here we go. It's Game 4. Clippers trail 2-1 in the series. They need to try to slow down Luka Doncic. Tyloo makes an adjustment. Out comes Zubats. In comes Batum for the start of the lineup. They mix up coverages, and it pays huge dividends. It's early in this game. Luka Doncic is yelling at Tim Hardaway Jr. to clear out to the corner so that he can take Reggie Jackson. Reggie even points to Kawhi to basically say, hey man, I kind of got this. And you're going to see something interesting, something the Clippers didn't really execute well in the first three games, but do here. Morris is going to be anchored at the elbow to force Doncic to spin baseline. Leonard has the low man responsibility. He has to be the rim protector. As Doncic goes to make his move, Leonard points to Batum to keep an eye on the corner shooter. Doncic goes up. Leonard makes an incredible block, and this was a sign of things to come. The book on Doncic is being written by the Clippers a little bit, and just don't let him get to the rim. Force him to keep taking jumpers. Screen set by Porzingis. This forces the switch with Batum. The Clippers are more than happy to do this. This is why they went small. Doncic goes into a step back. I want to see Batum navigate the space to give a decent contest on this. This isn't an easy shot. Doncic has made this in the series, but these are the shots the Clippers want him to keep taking. The benefits of going smalls, you can switch pretty much any action, and Dallas isn't going to impact you inside the paint outside of Doncic driving, so you can do this. Starts with this action, which is Hardaway flipping the ball back to Doncic, and guess what the Clippers do? They switch it. Now it's Kawhi onto Luka, Maxi comes up to set a screen, well now it's Morris, this is what I'm saying, you're switching 1 through 5, you can do it all here. As Doncic goes up, and he goes to the elbow, he shot fakes. Morris stays grounded, he doesn't bite for this. He absorbs the contact. This is good discipline. Finney Smith is going to knife through on a cut. Leonard has low man help responsibility. Jackson absorbs the contact very well here to get back in front. And guess what happens? Leonard gets the block. This is elite defensive stuff all throughout this play by the Clippers overall. You're going to see this time and time again. The Luka wall. The wall of Luka if you want to call it. Look what the Clippers do here. He's posting up against Batum. But look where Morris is. We're not going to let you get to the middle of the floor, bud. As Doncic goes, Batum gets the tip on the ball and forces a steal, but look at Leonard on the back line here. He's already rotating over as the help side defender. This play starts off for a side out of bounds, and this is the big adjustment here. Screen being set by Hardaway. Normally the Clippers would switch us, but watch the adjustment with Reggie Jackson right here. As we roll it forward, this is a show and recover. Hard show, recover back to Hardaway, allows Leonard to get back in front of Doncic. Now it's not a mismatch. Shot fake by Doncic, Leonard stays grounded, late shot clock. Now you're forcing the shot being taken with a defender on your hip by Finney Smith. This is not a good shot for Dallas, and this possession is a win for the Clippers. It's rare to see two defenders control a game like Batum and, and Kawhi did in this one. Screen being set by Hardaway. It's another hard show by Reggie Jackson, which will allow Paul George to get back to Doncic here. Doncic right about here realizes, oh crap, PG's back in front of me. As he comes over here, we're going to notice Kawhi Leonard is digging in front of Boban, which means the corner shooter is open. Leonard closes out. Pass to Boban should be there, but let's look at Batum. He's already snaking in front of, of Boban to get to the passing lane. Steals the ball on the entry pass. This is insane work. Zubats is on the floor. Dodgers has kind of killed him in the series, but he hasn't gotten to the rim, which is the big deal. Porzingis screen. We're going to see Zu get switched onto Luka here. And Luka's going to end up realizing, wait a second, I got him with me. Let me get the ball back and let's run this again. The Clippers want to keep Luka out of the paint, and Zubas does that very well. Even if Luka's making threes, Luka hesitation dribble to see if Doncic or to see if Zubats will bite on it. He doesn't. Zu absorbs the contact, gets out on Luka's mid-range pull-up, forces a miss. These are the shots the Clippers want. The two big things for the Clippers with Luka is make sure he doesn't get to the paint, so wall him off, and force other guys to do things. Entry pass to Luka in the post. We see Zu already slanting over to kind of provide some rim protection and deterrence. As it happens, Kali Stein gets in front of Rondo here. And Luka's going to make a nice pass to Kali Stein. But watch what Rondo does. Knifes through. Smacks the ball loose. Clippers get a steal and go the other way. You can play good defense and still have a guy make shots. That is Luka Doncic after all. High screen by Boban. Zu is in what we call low drop. He's there to meet Doncic as he drives. Doncic puts Kawhi in jail here, using a little bit of the off-arm. This is smart basketball by Luka. Floater from the dotted line. This is a basket and a shot the Clippers are more than willing to live with. Luka makes the shot. You see the strategy perfectly. Screen being set by Hardaway. What do the Clippers do? 
Hard show with Reggie Jackson. Gets back to Hardaway. PG is able to come back in front of Luka. And now the wall starts to form. And we see the arms out. Batum is anchored at the elbow, not letting Luka get to the middle. Marcus Morris is on the wing. And we see Kawhi Leonard as the low man. They're already preparing to come over and help defense should it be necessary. Batum reaches. This is what the Clippers have started to do too. Reach on Doncic if he comes through. Doncic gets bodied by George and hits an absolutely incredible shot. But it's good defense. This is beautiful defense on this play. And the Clippers generally just did a good job all game. You don't want to let Luka get to a step back on his left. And you don't want to let him get downhill to the rim. So Man is sitting on Luka's left hip. That's where he wants to step back. As Luka drives, Leonard has low man responsibility for rim protection, which means Kleba will be open in the corner. But Toom is then tasked to rotate to Kleba, which will leave Finney Smith open as he rotates up the wing, and means that Kawhi has to X out to Finney Smith. As we roll it forward, that's exactly what happens. Help defense, swing, and we see Finney Smith take this three. This is the three the Clippers want from a guy they want taking it. Leonard leaks out, they get a dunk out of this. This is the type of defense that the Clippers need to play for 48 minutes. Luka Doncic really is an incredible shot maker. He, it's an astounding thing to watch unfold. Screen being set by Maxi, Clippers switch. Now it's Terrence against Luka again. Terrence is once again shading Luka to take away the step back left. Luka drives, but look what happens. Kawhi digs over, and we're gonna notice that George is the low man. They're already deterring him. The wall is forming. Luka spins back. This is an incredibly tough shot. He makes it, but the wall is there to stop him. This is rather interesting. Porzingis comes up to set the screen. Kawhi says defender, and watch what Kawhi does. We're just gonna switch this action, bud. I'm gonna take you. And now the play really unfolds. Not only does Kawhi pick him clean, but watch the interesting stuff on the backside. Batum is walling him off at the dotted line, giving up Porzingis on the backside for a lob attempt. The Clippers are not concerned with Porzingis. They wanna stop Doncic, and they did. All right, so what happens if Dallas sets double screens? Let's start watching. Porzingis sets the high screen. We're going to see Rondo pointing to Kawhi to come switch out onto him. But watch what Dallas does. Hardaway sets a secondary screen. That should throw the Clippers for a loop, right? Wrong. Hard, hard show by Reggie Jackson. And Leonard's going to sneak out from under this Hardaway screen to get back in front of Doncic to contest this tough pull-up. Doncic has made this all series. But all you need to do is contest it a little better with a little bit better defenders. And sometimes you can make life a little tougher on him overall. Everyone needs to be on a string defensively, and this play really shows that. Little slip screen being set by Trey Burke. What are the Clippers going to do? They're just going to switch it. It's late in the clock, into the half. Let's see what happens. Luka has the ball. The anchors are in place. Reggie Jackson's going to deter a drive to the right. Rondo's going to deter a drive to the left as help defenders. But Pat Bev gets a little bit overzealous. He gets caught reaching. That could throw the Clippers for a loop. Wrong. Rondo sprints over to help. And we're going to see Batum's already stepping up as the low man in case Doncic drives. Porzingis is knifing through on a slot cut, and Man is going with him to defend him. Luka's going to recognize all of this and know that Burke is open on the wing. But Terrence Mann saves everyone's bacon by Xing out to the wing. Pass comes. Mann covers, covers this pass beautifully, gives a great shot contest, and the Clippers force another miss. I love how this starts. Batum's motion. Hey, everybody talk. Keep talking defensively. Luka will miss some shots, he'll make some shots, but this is kind of the stuff Clippers will live with. Leonard's deterring him from the middle of the floor. Doncic is stepping back. Batum's going to come over to contest this. Doncic has made this at a high level in the series. The thing is, make or miss, you want him taking these shots. This is a very long play, but it, I want to show you can play great defense even when you foul. Early screen, high screen set by Maxi Kleba. Jackson absorbs the contact by Hardaway. Kleba's going to run over to set a pin down for Luka against Batum. But watch how Batum navigates through this. Spins around, gets back in front of Luka to force him to put the ball on the floor and not take a three. Jackson comes over, digs down, and takes a swipe. Leonard comes over as the low man to be a rim deterrence. As we pause it here, Leonard is the rim protector, which means that Finney Smith could be open in the corner. But George is sitting perfectly in the passing lane playing the two-on-one. As Luka goes up, Leonard deters him with the contest. Morris is going to be anchored here in the mid post, which means Kleba will be open on the wing. Doncic knows that, passes out, and now Dallas goes into a quick reset. Doncic is going to get the ball, Batum is going to run him off the line again. This is good. You want him into the mid-range pull-up area. As it happens, Morris swipes down, and Batum is going to give an amazing contest here on this fading shot. 
The problem is he fouls Doncic on the wrist. Now, while this is a foul, the overall defense here is stupendous overall. The process matters on the defensive end of the floor. You have to be locked in. And we're going to see that on, on this play. Reggie Jackson does a good job here of top locking against Tim Hardaway Jr. and making it tougher for him to get involved in this play. But Toom also helps on the passing lane and Dodge just picked the ball up. He's not a threat from here. So Batum is going to crowd him to force him to give the ball up. And this kind of throws Dallas into a little bit of a haywire action. Maxi clears out with a, you know, kind of like a ghost screen, which is going to force the switch with Morris. Batum is anchored at the elbow, forcing Doncic away from the middle of the floor in a drive. So now it's a pull up, step back, mid range jumper. He misses. But even if he makes it, this is good. What's the best way to render Doncic not effective? Get the ball out of his hands. Screen being set. We're actually going to see the Clippers switch. The Jackson's now on him, but Kawhi's not going to live with that. He's going to reach over. He's going to make sure Doncic pays attention. Batum's the low man. He's already ready to, in case Doncic drives. Morris is anchored at the nail, which means Richardson will be open on the wing or could be open on the wing. Pass goes to Richardson. Morris gets out here right on the shooter's hip. This is not a good, high-quality shot. This is the shot the Clippers want the Mavericks taping, taking consistently. We see Porzingis set a screen. Well, the Clippers are going to get Kawhi switched on to Doncic. They're comfortable with this. Doncic goes into a step back, but I want you guys to look at something here. Batum's already ready to wall him off on a drive. He doesn't care that Porzingis is getting behind him. They're not scared of Porzingis as a lob threat because Jackson's the low man. While Jackson's smaller, they don't care about Porzingis. Step back three for Doncic. He misses this, but make or miss, this is great process by the Clippers. This is the problem that Dallas ran into playing Boban. You allowed the Clippers to play their pick and roll coverage traditionally. Zubats comes up high, regular pick and roll coverage, and he's gonna do a great job of playing two on one. He deters a Luka drive, deters Boban lob. Doncic tries to pump fake, George doesn't buy it. Pass comes out. Well, now Boban's been in the paint for too long. So this is offensive three second violation. This is why I don't think Boban can play. Defensively, offensively, it bogs everything down. We're going to see again a little bit of the problem Dallas runs into. They're on a little bit of a transition opportunity, but they pull it back to give it to Luka. They rely on him to do everything, and it kind of hurts them at times. Leonard comes out to greet Luka. Well, now it's Kawhi on Luka. And now comes the fun part. As Luka drives, Rondo digs down at the elbow. That's one deterrence. Because of where Boban is, it's going to allow Zubas to stay where he is. That's a second deterrence. Forces Luka into this tough mid-range step back. Guess what? He misses it, and the Clippers get yet another stop in this game. I feel like advanced scouting by the Clippers notified them that Doncic doesn't like passing the roll man as much. Screen by Brunson. Clippers are going to switch this and get Batum onto Luka. Once again, a lengthy defender. As Brunson cuts through, through the paint, Terrence Mann is, has low man responsibility, but this pass is never coming. Luka instead opts to take a tough step back jumper over the lengthy Batum. He misses, and it's another stop. Boban can't play in this series, and there's a slew of plays to show it. We see it here. Porzinga sets a screen. Morris is going to jump out onto Luka. As Luka raises the ball over his head, he's surveying the passing lane. He could pass to Porzingis. However, Kawhi Leonard is anchored at the dotted line because he's able to guard two players because Boban's also here. There's no spacing. As he goes to pass, Leonard jumps the pass to Boban, forces a steal and a stop. Final play, folks. I'm sure you're happy. I love it. Batum telling everyone to talk. Talk, 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 talk. Porzingis is running to set the screen. Jackson notices Doncic is going the other way, so he's going to jump out and body him. This is a smart play by Reggie Jackson, who had a very good defensive night overall. It went largely glossed over. As Doncic comes over another Marjanovic screen, he's going to get downhill, and this puts Morris as the rim protector. He has to play two-on-one as the low man. Morris is here. He adequately does his job. It strings Doncic out to the baseline. This is a tough shot. It's a miss, and the Clippers did a great job all night here. This was a very rough night for Luka Doncic. 9 of 24, only 19 points. He will be better in Game 5, but you saw the strategy by the Clippers. Switchable lineups, deter him from getting downhill to the rim, force him into tough step backs. They did their job in Game 4 and got the win.